Hey, what's up, guys? Good morning. Hi. I guess uh, there's supposed to be six people in here? Yeah. OK. I'll just hang out. Um, I'm just going to get some files ready to share with you guys. OK, cool. Do you know if Cindy's going to be in this class? Yeah, I think so. OK, cool. Morning. 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 So Chris said that he's having issues with his After Effects that he's been trying to troubleshoot for the past hour. Um, so I told him to see if like the office manager could help him fix up After Effects for him. But um, otherwise, we have the the tutorials and the follow-up notes that he could follow follow up after on. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna zip up some files for you guys right now. Yes. I think we're just missing Victoria, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. Otto, I just saw your messages. Yes, the the full amount, and yes, that's my work email. Okay, cool. I'll I'll, I'll do that later. Cool. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Hello. Hey, Victoria. Hi. How are you feeling? Much better today. That's good. Yeah, that's it's good. always scary right now. I feel like if you're like, I have a tickle in my throat or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. no, I, I mean, like, literally yesterday, all I did was sleep. So today I feel rejuvenated. <laughs> nice. Have you guys ever transferred files using Zoom? Um, no, but I, I've seen the option like to chat and send files. Hmm, I wonder why I can't. Um, I'm used to just being able to. Wonder if I change one of the settings before today. Let's see.
That's okay. I'm gonna, let's see, this file, this folder is, okay, this is pretty small. I'm gonna send, Cindy, can I email you, or maybe I'll send, I'll put a Google Drive link. How about that? Yeah, that works. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Checking you guys out. <laughs> oh, that's weird. I don't see the option. I'm looking at the chat. Um, I remember looking at it yesterday. It had the option to attach a file, but here it doesn't have. Yeah, I think option. my SDSU uh, account doesn't let me. Mm. No big deal. Okay, I'm uploading right now and then I'll send you guys, I'll drop in a link. Sounds good. Okay. I'm gonna share. Got it. Okay, usually usually when I'm starting a new class, the the beginning of the class is is a little bit jumpy because my goal is to quickly try to learn about you guys as fast as possible and then I can start to customize the the learning experience. So to make that happen faster, I just want to encourage you guys to feel free to interrupt me at any time uh, using mic or chat uh, anytime. So um, don't feel like you're being rude or you, you have to wait till I'm finished with a lesson or something. Just feel free anytime to jump in because that's going to help us speed up this whole learning process. Um, the more you guys get to know about me the and the more I get to know about you in the next couple of days, I think we can get the most done. So I'm going to start off with just jumping right into an exercise here. And uh, I've been teaching just real quick about me. I've been teaching computer graphics for about 15 years in San Diego. Um, I'm currently a teacher at SDSU and, and I also teach a lot of 3D animation stuff. And the way I teach all of my lessons is I've got, uh, I'm going to show you guys a demo and usually it's just like a couple clicks. That's, that's a whole lesson right there. And I'm gonna show everything at least two times. The first time I show you, just watch. I suggest you just sit back, look at the screen. You don't have to memorize anything. The idea is to get the, the beginning, middle and end and just understand where we're going with the exercise. And then I'm gonna walk you guys through it again after you've watched me do it so that when you're clicking and I'm giving you verbal, verbal cues, you already know where we're going with the exercise. And I find that that's a really effective way of of giving you guys the information. Okay, so uh, I definitely wanna do introductions and stuff and, and get to know you guys, but I think it's good to just jump right into using the program. Okay, I'm gonna open up a file called scale1tree.
Okay, in this After Effects file, um, I know some of you guys, everyone knows Photoshop and some of you guys know Premiere. Um, After Effects is very friendly. In my opinion, it's, it's pretty much like a combination of Photoshop and Premiere. So I've got a, a tree right here and this composition window, this timeline is kind of like my layers tab in Photoshop. So I've got one object in my layers tab. It's, it's just named tree underscore transparency. And all I'm gonna do is select this tree and I wanna expose an attribute called the scale attribute. Okay, what does scale mean to you guys? Um, to enlarge or minimize? I yeah, changing the size of it, okay? Like in, in Photoshop, what, what button would you hit to change the size of something or adjust the scale? What keyboard command? You guys know off the top of your head? Spacebar command. Spacebar command to change the size? To zoom in and out. Oh, to yeah. zoom in and out, okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, you could hit Command T for a free transform, and that gives you like a bounding box. Um, mm -hmm. If you guys look real quick here, this kind of looks like a bounding box. So you can grab, you can mm -hmm. grab these points and and adjust the size just like in Photoshop. But I'm gonna recommend against that right now. Instead, I'm gonna hit the letter S like I mentioned, and instantly it exposes this an attribute called scale. Okay, I'm going to do something called setting a keyframe and we'll talk more about animation later. I know not everyone here has experience in animation, but I'm going to click on this icon that looks like a stopwatch and that drops a diamond in there. Then I'm just going to slide my timeline a little bit further down and I'm going to scrub the values here. Scrubbing is like a, that's a nickname for just clicking and dragging. I don't know if you guys have heard of that before, but um, like I said, I don't, in the early stages of class, I throw a lot of stuff out there and, and quickly I'm just trying to figure out where you guys are at, what your goals are, um, how much you use computers, stuff like that. Okay, no judgments. But I just created some animation because I changed the scale, I changed the size from 14% at frame zero. And then after about one second, I increased the scale. So it's almost like I'm going from point A to point B. And what After Effects is doing is it's interpolating the different the, the change in between these keyframes. Okay, if you hit spacebar, that's like hitting play. Okay, I'm gonna start all over again and let's try this together as a group. Okay, um, if you guys have any issues, any questions, you know, how to, how to do anything or you want me to repeat something, please just interrupt me. Even if it's got nothing to do with this, it's okay. Um, the more communication we have, the better. So I'm going up to the upper left-hand corner and I'm choosing File, Open Project. From all the files I gave you, um, normally I would have these numbered, so it's very easy to just start from one and then move ahead. But like I said, the first class, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what, where I should start, so that's why I just dumped a bunch of files in here, but I'm gonna open a file called scale one tree. Are we, I'm sorry, are we using the files that you gave us? Do we have a, where are those? Yes, Okay. he shared a link in the chat um, and then just download the folder. It's a Google Drive link. Oh, okay. Um, Do you see the chat yeah, on the your, side? Time is cool, grab mm -hmm. the... Sorry, Zoom, still figuring out Zoom. It's okay. <laughs> Um, okay, chat. totally cool. Um, yeah, Heather, just, yeah. just shout out and interrupt me if you have a question. I'm just going to move ahead and I promise I'll start over again. And, and the next exercise actually repeats what we just did. So don't ever feel like you're going to, you're, you're missing out or anything. Okay. I'm, I'm very conscious of repeating things over and over again and incorporating repetition into these exercises. All right, I just opened up a file called zero 01, sc uh, scale zero 01, and immediately just click on this layer that's called tree transparency. When you guys activate a window, you'll notice that After Effects 
will have a blue highlight, a little blue square around that highlighted window, okay? Th that's just uh, an interface thing uh, that I want you guys to be aware of. Don't ever be afraid of just clicking inside of a window and activating it. Can't really do anything wrong, okay? I know some people have a little bit of fear of just clicking on the wrong thing, especially with a complex interface like this, but don't worry about it. All you're doing is just activating windows. I select this layer and I hit the letter S. The scale attribute comes out. Can someone tell me why are there two numbers next to the scale attribute? Why would there be two numbers? You guys see um, what those numbers are? Um, height and width? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. They're like coordinates. Oh, okay. <laughs> X, and, X and Y coordinates, <laughs> right? Height and width. It's actually width and height. Kind of like um, if you guys work with video, HD, what's HD resolution? Uh, thir 38, 40 times, uh, I forgot okay. the other one. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's okay. You don't have to have it memorized. I'm just throwing out questions because you know, the, I just want to get to know you guys a little bit better. Cindy, you just mentioned 2K video. So I know that you probably have a pretty decent TV at home. Um, regular HD <laughs> resolution is 1920 by 1080. Oh, yeah. So That's you're like saying traditional. 2K, which is cool. You know, you're, um, that's the level you're at. And the reason I mentioned resolution is because this is, when you guys are doing After Effects, you're, you have entered in the realm of video editing and you need to have a little bit of a, I want to build up your vocabulary. And you might, a lot of people say 1080p, same thing. But the reason I mention this is because 1920 is literally 1920 pixels wide. That's how, that's how big a regular TV resolution is. Even on your phone, if you turn it sideways, that's, you, that's literally 1,920 pixels wide and 1,080 pixels tall. So it's common to talk about width and then height. Okay, so if you look down at this tree, it's 14% wide, 14% tall. I'm gonna click on this little circle right to the left of the word scale. That's called a stopwatch. As soon as you click on this stopwatch, you see a blue diamond pop up. Um, has anyone here set keyframes in Premiere before? Anyone here do video editing? I've done a tiny bit in Premiere. Okay. Heather? Yeah. Name? Okay, nice to meet you, Heather. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, um, so. I've dabbled, I think, dabbled? but not... Yeah, just dabbled, I'd say. Okay. <laughs> Samantha, you're dabbled? Same. Same. I would say I've, I, I'm beginner stages. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that's cool. Um, yeah, video editing is, is very similar to what we're doing here because you do have to set keyframes to move things around and we'll talk way more about that. Okay, so I've clicked on the stopwatch which, which created a blue diamond and this blue diamond is literally like, I use the Uber analogy a lot. This blue diamond is like your pickup point when you call an Uber, okay? Now I'm gonna slide, I don't know if you guys can tell but um, there's a little like, it looks like a, a home base, it's blue. And if you click and drag it, it drags this whole blue vertical line around. This is called the, the playhead or the, I most people just call it the timeline. And if you move this forward in time and then scrub the number 14, it doesn't matter if you're scrubbing the width or the height, it doesn't matter if you scrub the first 14 or the second, because that there's a chain link, it's gonna stay constrained. The proportions will stay constrained. And by me changing the size of this tree further in time, that's kind of like my destination point if I'm calling an Uber. So Uber picks me up at point A and then it's gonna drop me off at point B. In other words, After Effects is gonna start off with a small tree and then a little bit later in time, it's gonna get bigger, okay? All right, I feel like that's a, that's a very fundamental breakdown or introduction into setting keyframes, okay? Usually when people learn about keyframes, they start off learning about position. Like how do I move this text from off screen to on screen? Um, I'm choosing to start with scale for a very important reason because there's something called an anchor point. 
And I want to, I got to bring that up when I talk about keyframes. Can someone take a guess? What does anchor point mean? Just take a guess. Where the center point would be if it were rotating. Exactly. It's basically. like the pivot point, the hinge. Okay. That was Heather. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, the pivot point and the scaling point. For example, if you look at how we just animated that tree, I set this up for you guys. Okay. I hope you appreciate all the hard work I put in. I'm just kidding. I, um, I prepped this file for you where I put the, the anchor point. If you, if you highlight this tree layer, you'll see that at the base of the tree, there's this little crosshair. I moved the anchor point down there so that it would scale up and it looks like the tree is growing. Okay, next exercise. Please just watch my screen, interrupt me uh, with anything, right? Anything you wanna say. If this makes you think about something that you wanna do, it makes you think about a commercial you saw, whatever, just shout it out because that's what, um, that's the benefit of you guys getting the, you know, that's what this tutoring is all about is to answer questions. Okay, I just opened up scale number two and check this out. Like I said earlier, like I promised, we're gonna repeat something, but of course I designed this lesson to, it's like a video game. This is not gonna be as easy as the first time around. So anyone remember what the first step would be if I wanted to animate this tree getting bigger? What would be the first step? Hit F. Yeah, who said that? Oh, Cindy, okay. Cindy, you're right. <laughs> I just wanna give recognition, all right, for class participation points. Um, I'm select, selecting the layer and I'm hitting the letter S. Just like Cindy said, there's a scale attribute. What's step two? Someone besides Cindy, what's step um, two? You Shout click on the, the stopwatch. Exactly, okay, Samantha said, click on the stopwatch. Nice to meet you, Samantha. I'm you can click. call me Sam. That's good too. <laughs> <laughs> you, did you say you go by Sam? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know why I put my phone name. It's just formality. <laughs> oh, no, it's cool. I like calling her Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> you so, know, auto is spelled auto backwards. Yes, it's a palindrome. <laughs> <laughs> There's other palindromes out there like Anna, <laughs> mom, dad. Okay, anyways, <laughs> I like going off on tangents, but it's my job to bring us back. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch. And of course, there's a, your first keyframe. I'm going to slide my timeline down. And what do I have to do to the number? I got to scrub the number. Okay, we call that scrubbing. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. There's some, uh, like in Illustrator, there's some attributes. I feel like I, I definitely scrub values in Illustrator sometimes. Um, it's just another way of using a slider on a number. So I'm gonna click and drag and look what happens. If I scrub, what is the problem here? Why is this getting bigger, but changing the position at the same time? The anchor Heather, points, you probably yeah. understand why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the anchor point's not in the right place. Okay, all right, cool. Um, so let me ask you guys a hard question and uh, no reason to stress out <clears throat> if, you, if you don't know the answer, but I wanna ask you guys, because my anchor point is in the wrong spot, I, we already established that, should I change the anchor point first before setting that second keyframe or should I just keyframe it getting bigger and then change the anchor point later? I would, I would assume you have to change the, like go back to the, the start and change it and then recreate that motion. Otherwise it would get wonky, right? Okay, Victoria is saying, nice to meet you, Victoria. Uh, <laughs> Victoria is saying we, we gotta avoid the wonky wonkiness, okay? Don't let it get wonky. <laughs> My no. verbiage is really accurate. <laughs> no, 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 hey, that, that's, um, <laughs> you know, that's, our, that's how we talk. So that's how you guys talk at Taylor Pond. <laughs> right. Um, so, so Victoria is saying before you before you call that Uber driver, you better make sure that everything's set. Like you know your your pickup point set. Your shoes are on. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, yeah, exactly. Make sure you're not you're not going to throw up in the car. Um, okay. Yes, correct. You could if if I try to change the anchor point later. It does work, okay? But I think 
it's a good habit to, once you realize that the anchor point's not in the right spot, I'm just gonna say that um, in computer animation, there's always multiple ways to do stuff. There's always a way to fix, a way to work around, okay? But I'm just going to share with you guys my personal, just in my experience from teaching After Effects, I think if you, before you animate scale or rotation, it's always a good idea to be aware of the changing the anchor point. And the way we do that, let me just select this second keyframe and I'm gonna hit delete and delete it. I'm gonna start at the beginning. And the way we do that is, um, this is really frustrating for me as a teacher because this, this tool is really weird and it's got a weird name. In the upper left-hand corner of your screen, you should see a bunch of icons and normally in Adobe products, it's a vertical list of icons on the left side of your screen. After Effects just decided to make it horizontal, but it's a lot of the same tools. But there's an icon that looks like a weird crosshair. It's like a square with like arrows inside of it. And the keyboard command to activate that is the letter Y. Okay, the letter Y is change anchor point tool. Okay, I just put that in the chat just to change it up a little bit, okay? So I'll hit the letter Y and, and I don't know if you noticed, but my cursor changed. When I'm on the normal selection tool, which is V, just like in Photoshop, I have a white cursor arrow, but as soon as I hit Y, it turns black and it's got this weird little square that's attached to it. Don't freak out, it's just a different tool letting you know. And in order to change the anchor point, you gotta click right on it and slide it down. And don't worry about being accurate for this exercise, guys. Just um, get it as close as possible to the base of the tree. And then if you feel confident, just go ahead and start scaling it up again and you should get good results. Okay, I'm gonna start all over again and let's try this together as a group. Please open scale number two. You can see that the name of this file even has the letter Y in there. Okay, that's, that's because I'm always trying to drop clues, try to incorporate everything to, to remind you guys what the lessons are about. And that's why we should feel confident just interrupting me, going off on tangents because uh, I'm ready to bring you guys back on track anytime. But it's so important for you guys to, to, to just express yourself, talk about what you are thinking about, if you have questions, comments, because me getting to know you guys as soon as possible is so crucial for me, you know, after today's class, for me to go home and prep the next class and make it as customized as you can. All right. Please select this tree layer so that it turns white, okay? It's not actually white, it's actually like, um, it's actually like, light gray, but I'm just gonna say highlight it white to be selected. If you tap the letter S, you see the scale attribute. If you start scrubbing the value, you'll see the tree start to move up and down. You can even go negative scale, guys. You can invert it and it flips up, okay? Don't worry, you can always hit Command Z to just undo. <clears throat> hit the letter Y and you'll see your cursor change. If you hit V and then Y, just switch between those two tools. Okay, really important. I know you guys are probably used to hitting the letter V because that's how you finalize or get out of stuff in Photoshop, right? You don't ever wanna be hanging out in the wrong tool in Photoshop, like the wand tool, trying to do stuff or trying to make your Photoshop composites while you're in the lasso tool. You always gotta hit V to switch back. Well, I'm hitting Y I grab this crosshair that's in the center of the screen, okay? Anchor points are always gonna default to the center of the screen. Click and drag it down to the base of the tree. Just ballpark area, it doesn't have to be perfect. Hit the letter V, make it a habit to hit the letter V to, to get back out of that anchor point tool. Okay, um, anyone done already? Mm -hmm. yeah. If we were in a classroom, I'd be walking around just quickly visually check on <laughs> you guys to see if you're done and that that lets me know that I can move faster but we're on zoom so I have to ask you guys anyone done I'm done yeah yes okay all right then I'm going to move a little faster I'm going to set a keyframe slide my timeline down and then 
increase the value. Okay, and then I'm just going to hit play. So my tree got bigger. Okay, what what can you let's say let's say something happened and the class was over right now. Would you guys be able to use what you learned already for anything at work? Yeah. yeah. The answer could be no. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, Jesse, I, I, I saw your mouth move first. Oh. What what are you thinking about that you could use this for? Um, just like a simple animation, I guess. Um, like a a zoom in on something. I don't know. Okay. Typography, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Typography. Okay, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Is like, uh, I want to know what kind of clients you. I mean, I, I looked through your your website and stuff, so I, I have an idea. But I want to know, like, currently, like, is or your most recent project. Like, I just want to hear a little bit about. Um, we do projects. We do a lot of like social graphics for a lot of different beauty brands. So like just adding in that element of movement, sometimes even like in a simple animation goes a long way on the social posts. So like stuff like this, where we're scaling a product or typography, it happens fairly frequently for us. So to just learn how to um, do this the right way and, and smoothly um, is very helpful. Okay, perfect. I totally understand. Um, you know, when you're, when you're doing an advertisement on social media or actually anywhere, you can't just have stuff stay still, mm -hmm. right? You gotta, anything that moves, like we're just conditioned to like, our eyes get attracted to it and we're gonna watch it for like a second longer. So having stuff move is really important. Okay, that's good to know that you guys are doing that. Um, I'm gonna jump into another project. Okay, I'm gonna open up a file called Wobble Scale and Uh, you know what? I wish I, I don't think I gave you guys any audio files. Let me check. Yes, I did. Okay, cool. I'm going to open a file called Wobble Scale. And um, if you have your speakers on and stuff, it might, there's like a dubstep like <laughs> track in here. So there's some audio. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do this exercise really quickly. This is for sure going to be a step up from the last lesson we just did. But um, like I said, I hope you guys don't get too flustered if I jump around. Um, sometimes it's good to like throw people in the deep end real quick and then take you back to the shallow end. And then you just kind of, you can kind of practice your skills in the, on a hard level and then jump back and then you kick butt on like easy level and then you feel good. Okay. So that's kind of what my mentality is. I'm always going to share my teaching philosophy with you guys. So you guys can understand why I'm doing things the way I'm doing it. Okay. Just showing you that, I don't know if you guys can see on your screen, but there's an eyeball button, also known as the visibility button, just like in Photoshop and other Adobe products. Okay, this is pretty much universal now. You can hide and reveal stuff. And the second layer has another icon next to it. What do you think this icon means? Audio you can see it. sound. Yeah, it's an audio clip. Okay, that's it. It's an MP3 file. After Effects can, can play MP3 files. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna hit select this text and hit the letter S. And I noticed that the stopwatch is already blue. Okay. So somebody created some animation for me already. Instead of the tree getting bigger, I've got some text and it's actually going from big to small. Okay, I'm gonna just move my timeline right in the middle where it got a little bit smaller. And watch this, I'm going to use this diamond button. Okay, this is one of the most confusing parts for, uh, for beginner animators, like learning After Effects. Otto, I thought you said click on the stopwatch to set a keyframe. Now you're telling me look for this diamond icon to set another keyframe. What's up with that? Okay, well, let me just mention, and I'll keep on saying this throughout the whole, you know, the whole, every session that we have. When you click on the stopwatch to set a keyframe, that's like saying, that's like a, a one time only switch. That's like saying, After Effects, I want some animation on this attribute. 
it's like you're you're just placing an order okay but if you want to adjust that animation and, and make more changes you have to you never want to click that again because if i click on this stopwatch for a second time after effects will give me a warning okay well it used to it looks like they took that out <laughs> Um, if I click on it a second time, it actually deletes all the keyframes. So it's kind of like a, a, a toggle like a switch. To say, <laughs> yeah, it's a stopwatch to just say, hey, is there animation or not? But right. otherwise, I'll be using, I'll be simply changing the value or using this diamond icon to just drop in keyframes. Okay, and I'll talk more about that a little later. Just want to say, all you guys have to know is that this stopwatch is a little bit weird. Only click it once. And that's all you need. So I'm just going to go through this real quick. And I think some of you guys will pick up on what I'm doing. Uh, anyone here have a page up and page down button on your keyboard? Or are you guys on a laptop? Yeah, just arrows. OK, that's cool. What I'm going to, when we want to move frame by frame forward, use command left or right arrow. You have to use two hands, unfortunately, OK? but. If you guys look carefully at my blue timeline, I'm just moving back and forth with holding command and using left and right. Okay, now I'm gonna move really quickly now because I feel like I've been talking for a while. Check this out, guys. I'm dropping a diamond right here. I'm not even worried too much about the timing. I'm gonna hold command and use the right arrow. One, two, three, four, five. Then I'm gonna drop another one. One, two, three, four, five. Clicking on the diamond again. One, two, three, four, five. Clicking on the diamond again. One, two, three, four, five. And I just dropped in five keyframes. Let me ask you guys something. If I hit play, what's going to happen to my animation? This is a trick question, by the way. What's going to happen when I play my animation now after dropping in these five keyframes? It um, remain the same, right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Sam, did you say that? Or yeah. Okay. Sam. Sam's right. The animation is exactly the same. Just because I dropped keyframes in there doesn't mean the animation is going to change. All I did was just set, it's almost like um, I just set a marker for that because I didn't actually, okay, oops, sorry about that. I didn't actually <laughs> change the value of the scale. All I did was just set keyframes there. What I'm going to do now, look, this word is going from big to small, I call this next part adding resistance. Watch this. If, if I'm going from big to small and I'm adding resistance, if something's trying to get small and I'm, I'm adding resistance, it means that I want to keep making it bigger. So watch this. I'm going to go to this next keyframe and right before it, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because I'm adding resistance. Now I'm going to go. I'm using those as markers and I'm going to add resistance and make it a little bigger. Moving forward, adding resistance, making it bigger. You could use command right arrow. Okay. I'll be, I'll be mentioning that later on, but I'm adding resistance. And what do you guys think this animation is going to look like now? A wobble. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a wobble. It's like a bass drop. It's going to be, um, this song is just has a lot of like ups and downs. So this animation would work no matter where you have it. Okay, I'm going to play it. I don't know if you guys will hear the audio with it, but. Okay, this is a very simple formula, but I, I like to just throw this out there. It's kind of an intermediate animation lesson, but let's try this together as a group. I hope that makes sense to you guys. It's like I put speed bumps into the animation. Okay, think of that analogy. I'm going to start all over again. Please go to file open. And I, I highly recommend you guys do not save these projects. If you, if you accidentally saved already, it's okay. But the reason I'm recommending that you don't save is so that you can go back and practice this later on, kind of like you're, you're redoing the lesson again. So that's, that's all I'm, that's the only reason. Okay. I'm opening up a file called wobble scale. Okay, step one, uh, if you get any like mess windows popping up, just click okay on everything. Some of these files were made in like a, 
like Creative Cloud 2019 or 2018, and it's just saying that it's updating it. Okay, step one, please, please select the top layer, layer one, select it so it's highlighted white, and hit the letter S. You should see the scale attribute there. You can hit spacebar and hit let, let it play. If the sound is bothering you, all you have to do is just click on this volume icon on the left side of the screen. And that'll, a, that's like muting it. Yeah, question? I have a quick issue. I don't know what happened. My, um, everything, all of my windows were set up fine, but when I opened this file, it kind of moved everything around and it's not letting me move my windows. Okay, no problem. Um, I'll show you how to, I can talk about how to move windows later, but the quick fix would be to go to the window menu at the top. And the first, the first option is workspace. There's a sub menu for workspace. And just like a lot of Adobe stuff, you can reset your default to save layout. Um, I recommend using. Reset. Yeah, you could switch oh, there to animation. We go. That should work. Okay. Did that I work for you? The default. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Good question. So if you guys ever find that your, your layout gets messed up, certain windows disappear or something, that's where you fix it is just go to window workspace. And the easy fix is probably reset default, but you can always choose animation. That's pretty standard. Okay. Everybody's got the scale attribute exposed. And if you hit play, you can see that I just muted my audio, but if you hit space bar to play, I already set keyframes for the word getting smaller. Just move your timeline somewhere in the middle. Now, if you wanna, I know you guys, when you start animating, you, you recognize that it's important to sync up your animation with your audio, like with certain sounds, you know, like a ding, you want something to like, like a little special offer to pop up or maybe um, fade something out based on the music. Well, if you hit this little carrot next to the number two at the bottom of your, in your timeline, and you expand that, you'll see the word audio pop up. And then if you expand the audio, you can see the word waveform pop up. And then if you expand waveform, you can see a visual representation of how loud your audio is. Okay, if you muted your audio, you're going to have to turn that volume icon back on in order to see your waveform. And of course, because this is kind of a noisy track, it kind of, it's really jagged and it's not like you can necessarily see a peak, but in the future, if you're, if you're trying to sync things up, looking at the waveform is going to be very helpful to match your keyframes with the peaks and valleys of the audio. Okay. Anyone here ever heard of Naveen K? He's the, he's a drummer for a metal band called Animals as Leaders but he also like broke off on his own and makes like a lot of like electronic like dubstep sounding stuff anyway pretty cool interesting yeah naveen k he's awesome. got really cool videos on youtube where he's literally drumming to like his own with his own electronic like drum uh drum and bass and like trap slash dubstep tracks okay so there's a drop in here, but like you, once you, I'm not gonna be too concerned with the placement of my keyframes now because you can always slide them around to match later. So just move your timeline somewhere in the middle and right away, we're gonna do something that's very repetitive. Move your mouse back over to the left side of the screen and look for that diamond that's horizontally aligned with the scale attribute and click on the diamond. That drops a keyframe in there next. Hold command with one hand and use the right arrow five times with your other hand. One, two, three, four, five. Drop another diamond in there. I have a quick question. Sure. Is there a key command to just set another anchor point or do you have to constantly go back and click it? Um, th there actually is. Um, it's. It's shift alt, it's shift option S. Okay, but the thing, here's the thing. I don't, I don't wanna, of course, I'm gonna answer your question and tell you what it is, is shift option S. But the reason I don't show that or want you to do that right now is because there's not a keyboard command 
for every single attribute. There's sometimes that you want to keyframe and animate how blurry something is. There's sometimes you want to keyframe the color changing from red to yellow for a sunset. There's not a keyboard command for those. So you'll have to get used to using the interface. Scale, position, rotation, those are something, those are very common attributes and there's keyframes for those, but not for everything. So great question. If you want, you guys can use shift option S, but I want to get you guys used to being familiar with where this diamond is. So that's why I'm recommending that. Okay, but cool. do whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever is most efficient for you. I'm going to click on that diamond and I want you guys to just put five keyframes down that are five frames apart. Okay, if, if it's four frames apart by accident, it's okay. What's important in this exercise is not getting doing it exactly how I did it, but rather understanding the overall lesson, which is setting keyframes, putting, dropping keyframes, and then adding resistance in between. Okay, any questions about dropping five keyframes down? Okay. Actually, I have one question because I did it manually. When you were saying to do the page over, what, what command did you hit to hit the arrow? Uh, okay. What command did I hit to hit the arrow? You know okay. how you were saying you clicked the arrow five times over? Did you just hit like shift that? No, or? no, command left or right arrow. Okay. Yeah, I was yeah. doing it manually, but I was like, all right. Yeah, yeah. Do, doing it manually is safe. Um, if you... Let's say you forgot to hold command and you just use left or right arrow. That's very dangerous actually. Okay. And that's why I kind of wish that um, After Effects would change this keyboard shortcut. But if you just use left and right arrow without command, what you'd be doing is you'd be literally moving the letter, you'd be moving the word left or right. So arrow keys by itself change the position of your layer or your object. Okay, FYI, we haven't done any position keyframing yet, um, but I think that's worthwhile to mention. So hold command, just get used to it, hold command. And now what I'm gonna do is go to the first keyframe and I'm gonna move two keyframes to the left of it. Okay, since the word is getting smaller, okay, like let's say I'm trying to lose weight Adding resistance means I can't help eating donuts and stuff and I just keep getting bigger no matter how small I get. So adding resistance, always think about what your destination is. And if you're adding resistance, do the opposite. So I want to hover over these two numbers next to the word scale on the left side. And I'm going to scrub and just make it a little bit bigger. Just a little bit is all you need to, to interrupt that animation. Okay, then hold command. Go five frames forward. One, two, three, four, five. Add a little bit more, add a little bit of resistance. Make it a little bit bigger again. One, two, three, four, five. Just going a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm totally just eyeballing this. If, if you decided to go crazy, okay, I teach um, college, but I also teach a lot of kids in um, just for after school programs and stuff. If I was teaching little kids, someone would type in 1 million percent in here. Okay, that's just what little kids do. And uh, it used to kind of piss me off, but because sometimes that crashes the computer, but I realized that that's awesome. They are always experimenting and it actually benefited me as a teacher to have that experience where I have to design my lessons where people decide to go crazy and type in a huge number, that, that should be part of the learning process. And um, if you guys do crazy stuff like that, it, it really does speed up your learning in my opinion, because you find out what happens. So don't feel like you gotta be, do everything proper. And um, of course, if you do it right, that's good. It's, a, it's a good learning experience, but maybe the second or third time you try this on your own, let's say you practice later tonight, see what happens, see how it looks. Maybe even try it right now. See what happens if one of the numbers, you make it huge. Okay, when you guys hit play, I'm gonna turn my, I'm gonna mute my audio, but once you guys add resistance, you should see that your wobble now has a little bit of resistance and that kind of shake, that really is relevant for, you know, it's, it's trendy, okay? 
this will get this will gain people's this will get people's eyes on it this will make someone look at your whatever it is that's moving for a split second longer and that's that's important because those split seconds add up especially when it comes to advertising okay we're trying to we're trying to brainwash people and get into their subconscious that i'm joking by the way <laughs> Okay, like, I'm not that evil. All right. Any questions about this wobble exercise? Okay. I think it's important to, to try this exercise. I'm going to do this exercise again, but I'm going to start from scratch. Um, no, you know what? I'm going to go to file open because I really think it's a, I really think it's beneficial to kind of repeat and, and make things feel circular. So I'm going to open up scale number two, tree Y anchor point, and I'm going to wobble the tree. Okay, check this out. I'm going to do this as fast as possible as if you guys weren't even watching and I was just doing this on my own for a freelance gig. I'm double clicking to import. I'm going to go to the folder and I'm going to import in, uh, whoops, it's my SDC folder. I'm going to import in that MP3 file. Okay. So what I'm doing now is again, I'm jumping up, I'm leveling you guys up. I'm moving really fast. I just imported that MP3 and the upper left-hand corner is where it's called your project window. It's where all your assets are stored. Okay. If you guys are used to editing video with premiere, this, uh, the window, the project window in Premiere is in your lower left-hand corner. I wish they would just standardize it all, but anyway, in After Effects, it's in your upper left-hand corner. Now I drag it down into my tree project. So there's my audio. It's my habit to just open up my waveform and take a look at the waveform. There it is. I'm gonna select the tree and hit the letter S. There's no keyframes there. I know I'm gonna keyframe it, so I hit the letter Y. The letter Y was to change the anchor point, okay? Some of you guys might be like, what the heck, why is he talking so fast? I'm just trying to change it up so you guys don't fall asleep. All right, I'm trying to just be different a little bit, but also I'm repeating a lot of the same stuff you just did. So this should, this should like trigger some memories. I changed the anchor point. Now I'm gonna hit the keyframe, the stopwatch to set my first keyframe. I'm never gonna hit that stopwatch again because that deletes my animation. I'm gonna move down my timeline a little bit and I'm gonna increase the size of this tree. Before the wobble was getting smaller. Now the tree is getting bigger. Doesn't matter. The formula is going to be the same. I'm going to go somewhere in the middle, use that diamond to drop it in. Command one, two, three, four, five. Drop it in. One, two, three, four, five. What if I only do three keyframes? Let's try that. Going back, I'm going to add resistance. It's getting bigger, so that means I got to make this smaller. Five frames forward, make it smaller. Five frames forward, make it smaller. Okay, now I'm gonna hit play. Okay, let me turn off the audio and just, um, I'm doing something else right now where I just limit the playback area. And you guys can see there's a little bit of that like jagged motion, which is really important. It gets people's attention. If you, if you just drop this kind of animation in anywhere, it, it looks like a mistake. But if you time it together with the audio, um, and it's also methodical, it'll look good. It'll, it instantly adds a little bit of professionalism. And look at how fast I did that. Probably like, honestly, in less than two minutes. Let's try this together as a group, okay? Um, by the way, guys, just interrupt me if you have questions at any time, if you want me to repeat anything, if this makes you think of anything, please reopen a file called scale two, tree Y anchor point. If you saved over, if, if you already have some animation on there and you saved over, it's okay. Um, you can easily just delete keyframes that you already made by highlighting it and hitting backspace or delete. You guys are on Macs, so you don't have a backspace button. It's, you have a big delete button. And if you're on a if iMac, you have a small delete button. Okay. Hover your mouse over the project window. That's the window in your upper left-hand corner. Hover your mouse over that. And there's two objects in here. There's a composition icon and their PNG. We'll talk more about what composition icons are later. You don't really have to know about that now. But underneath these two objects is a bunch of empty space. 
you could go to file and choose import. You could hit command I to import, but honestly, the fastest and most professional way that all After Effects users that I know do is they double click. Same thing with Premiere, same thing with Audition. A lot of Adobe products, you just double click to import something. So that's why I'm gonna recommend just double clicking. Navigate to the file, fol the folder that I gave you guys and look for this MP3. It's called Naveen K Human Design Wobble. Okay, I'm giving credit to the artist. Look them up. Listen to them a few times on Spotify so you get some money. <laughs> All right, importing. And now everybody should have three objects in their project window. Drag this MP3 file, okay, drag it all the way down into the timeline and it should appear as layer number two. Out of habit, I just expand my audio and open up the waveform. I just, to me, I'm a paranoid artist, okay? I've been traumatized so many times by my computer crashing, by things not working, that I've developed, uh, my personal workflow is I'm just super paranoid and I'm gonna share with you guys all the paranoid things I do because I think it actually makes me a better uh, freelance artist because I'm always saving things in two places. I always email myself files. I always rename things with organized names. So th these are one of those habits for After Effects. Okay, this double checks that I make sure my audio is in here. Okay, I'm selecting the tree layer and I hit the letter S. Anyone remember the keyboard command to change the anchor point? Why? <laughs> Why? Why not? Okay, you're right. Letter Y. Changing that anchor point to the base. Okay, and I, I'm fully aware that some, some of you guys might just be watching. You're like, you know what? I'm, I'm never going to do this in real life. I'm just going to watch. That's cool. You can still. Uh -uh. <laughs> mm -mm. We're using the shit out of this. You're doing it? Okay. Okay. Cindy's like, you guys are going to get tested. <laughs> okay. I changed the anchor point to the base. Move your timeline somewhere in the middle, wherever you want this. Oh, no. I'm sorry. We got to make this tree get bigger. So at frame zero, at the very beginning of the timeline, just hit your stopwatch and that blue diamond should appear on frame zero. I don't really care where you move the timeline to make it bigger, but I'm going to go close to the very end. And then I'm going to scrub that 14% number and just make that tree a lot bigger. Okay, so if you hit play, You've got some nice smooth animation of the tree going from small to big. Okay, if you guys feel confident, just go ahead and and please repeat that exercise that we just did. We're creating a wobble animation. Okay, and of course, I'm going to verbally tell you what to do. So you know, you you really don't have to feel like you're doing this all on your own. I'm moving my timeline somewhere in the middle and I'm gonna move my mouse all the way back over to the left and click on this diamond. Using command right arrow, I'm moving forward five frames. One, two, three, four, five. Click on that diamond again. We're setting keyframes for the natural progression of this getting bigger. Okay, but really it's like we're setting some markers. Two, three, four, five. For the exercise I just did, I only set three keyframes. Okay, but you can set more. Maybe I'll do four this time. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna drop in a fourth one. Okay, now, now it's time to add resistance. So I'm going back a couple frames forward. Now, where you add resistance, this Every, any decision you make in computer animation or any decision you make as an artist, no matter what you're working on, <clears throat> does have some type of impact, okay? If I, if I start setting resistance up 
too far away, it's not going to be as wobbly. Okay, but these are things that over time you guys can start to be creative with it and maybe change up this exercise a little bit. I'm just going to move to my first keyframe that I dropped in and I'm going to hold command and go to the left two times. Now I'm going to, it's trying to get, it's trying to get bigger. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Now I'll go hold command one, two, three, four, five. It's trying to get bigger. I'm going to try to push this tree down, keep it small. One, two, three, four, five. Pushing it down. Okay. Your animation look should look somewhat similar to what I've got on my screen. Okay, we've got about half an hour left of class. And I just want to, I think it might be good to take maybe just a minute or so for everyone to just share with me what your goals might be for this class. Okay. Maybe it's going to be the same for everybody, but it'd be cool just to hear a little bit about like what kind of art you do. Um, what your favorite programs are that you use at work. You know, just, I'm going to even take notes on this because all this information is important for me to create a customized experience, a positive learning experience where, where um, you really feel like the lessons are catered to you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to last longer in your brain. And I promise you, stuff like computer animation will disappear very quickly if you don't practice. So um, I'm, I know you guys will practice, but I'm just, I just wanted to go through this and learn a little bit more about you guys so I can improve, improve the class. I'll start with myself. Um, I started doing animation in school. I went to film school as an undergrad in New York. I went to NYU film school and, and I started focusing in animation because I like to draw and it was, I was getting more, I was get, I was making more money than my classmates. You know, in film school, you can either just be like a PA or starting out, but in animation, you get, you could just get paid almost double for a lot of like more skilled things and you don't you just get to sit in a cubicle and work but anyway i started using after effects back in like 1997 and on a show called little bill at nickelodeon so back then i actually didn't have any computer animation experience back then it was okay to learn on the job but nowadays you have to already have those skills to get a job. You have to have more skills than you actually need to get the job. Uh, back then it was like, Hey, you know, you have some good references and you, you do stuff traditional, you do traditional art. We'll train you. So um, now I'm really into doing 3d animation. Uh, but I also teach all Adobe stuff at San Diego state. So, I like using all these kind of different graphics softwares and to me it's 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 really rewarding to teach it too. All right, so someone else, I don't know, anyone want to start? Um, just like, like what your I mean you can just tell me whatever you want, but um like your favorite programs that you use, maybe what your goals are for this class. Yeah, so personally I'm proficient in uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, but InDesign I don't use as much. Um, I have played around a little bit with Premiere, uh, but most of the animations I've done is within Photoshop, either with frames or um, the timeline. Um, what I hope to learn, again, personally, um, I'm pretty sure it will be helpful for the rest of you guys, but more, more in the realm of like trimming paths, I think it's called trimming, trimming paths. So like, for example, if I'm writing something in cursive, I would want to make it so that it masks and it looks like it's being written. Oh, okay. You know? okay so it. that's kind of hard to accomplish in, in Photoshop. 
Yeah. We learned it like super briefly a long time ago, but I've never put it into practice. But I would want to do something more complex. Okay, like I'll show you. I'll sure to include that. So you, it sounds like Sin, you're more. You come from like a print background. Now you're trying to do more animation. I've always been mostly digital. I was mainly print like during college time, but um, yeah, since a lot of demand is coming up for motion and more intricate motion. Um, that's some of the stuff that I haven't had the chance to learn on my own. Um, and I just learn better in a classroom environment. Yeah, totally. No, for sure. You, you, can, you guys for sure can learn on your own. But why when, when you can just have someone like guide you through it? Not only that, but I also wanted to learn kind of like the workflow. How, like you mentioned, I do things that are paranoid. Um, I also learned the hard way. So like, that's kind of good to know from someone else. Yeah. Um, what else? I think you have this in the agenda for maybe tomorrow, but like masking, animating mask layers. So like masking in Photoshop is pretty straightforward, but there's sometimes things that you can't really mask. For example, if you want to do something transparent, it can't be transparent in a mask. It'll disappear. Um, so yeah, masking would be cool. Yeah, absolutely. Masking is huge. Um, really just in terms of digital art, understanding and being able to control where holes are, like what transparent, what's transparent and what's opaque, what's semi-transparent, all that stuff is like very, very fundamental, but important. Okay, masks. Cool. Um, I guess I'll go. Okay, Jesse. Um, so I guess my goal is just to like learn the basics of animation and kind of be able to bring like my own illustrations to life. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, and also just, uh, you're I like, forget, like forget this company. I'm, I want to boost my own career. I want to boost my own <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, yeah, creating an, like what, what do you, you just draw with pencil or like? Uh, yeah. Um, I, I was actually like really into art, um, throughout my life and I kind of picked design because I was like, Oh, well, I want to make money doing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do art on the side and I'd love to have that, like, I don't know, as an option to kind of play around with. After Effects is uh, the perfect tool for bringing your drawings to life. Like, I don't know if you guys ever watch a show called Reading Rainbow. <laughs> yeah. um, they'll take like a children's book and they literally use After Effects. They take a children's book and they just cut it up with Photoshop and then animate. Even if, even if it's just a character blinking or moving arms around. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, character design and character animation in After Effects is for sure a thing. There's so many like online tutorials on that and like you can buy full on like a full on like a year long package like there's there's animators out there that sell these huge character animation like packs and stuff um but i'll, I'll for sure include that as well cool. and that's not even that's also relevant to to advertising so it's not like it's, it would just be for your yeah, personal definitely. art you could use it yeah so. mm -hmm. that work Cool. I'll go. Um, so my background was originally in fine art, um, kind of similar to Jesse. I got into design because I figured it would be a better choice. Okay. Um, and then I really ended up loving it. And um, I studied, I've definitely been more on the digital side. Um, I studied web design in college. And um, I'm really interested also in animating illustrations. Um, definitely for my personal work, but we do, we have the opportunity to do a little bit of that at work. So I think that would be really useful. Um, but also we do a lot of like, like video clips. So, you know, adding text or, you know, even just like short 30 second, like ad videos, I guess, taking like, taking video clips and then putting like text or information or maybe even illustrations and you know, creating some sort of animation that way. Uh, Heather, let me ask, um, what, what kind of fine art would, did you like focus in? Was there any specific or? 
Yeah, I did. I started out in acrylic painting and then I dabbled in oils and like pastels and kind of everything. Now I mostly just do watercolor and gouache. Cool. Awesome. Okay, yeah, for sure. Um, that's good to know. We call uh, animating text is also known as kinetic typography. And you guys, I'm sure you've seen like lyric videos, but uh, <clears throat> animating text is huge. That's that's a really important form of communication these days. So yeah, we'll cover that. That I think that's also going to require us to get into something called 3D layers and After Effects, which a lot of people don't like, but it's I'll, I'll, I'll ease you guys into it. I, I don't think it's I don't think you have to really like be a master at it, but just to know it exists and to at least know how to turn some things on and, and off is going to be important. So I'll, I'll include that too. 3D text and kinetic type. Very cool. I think something uh, that falls in line with animating illustrations, like Jesse and Heather mentioned, is animating logos. So I know that's like something that's becoming really popular is bringing the logo to life. Yeah. I think that directly applies with what um, Jesse and Heather were saying about animating illustrations because a lot of logos are vector based. Yeah, okay. All right, who else? You're saying it goes hand in hand, I feel. Okay. I'll go. Um, so I think my biggest goal with the class would be to just, I haven't taken enough time to consistently work in After Effects. Like I keep as as things come up and I, I find the need to use it, I use it. So it's kind of like, if you don't use it, you lose it kind of thing. So just like re getting familiar with just the process of how this works and knowing how to do it the right way. Cause a lot of it was me self teaching for a lot of the first graphics we've had. Um, motions only kind of been in on our plate, at least for the, the past like year and a half or so. Um, so it's becoming more prevalent. Um, but I like, the idea of being able to start to create a little bit more complex motion graphics. Everything I've done is in Photoshop pretty much. So it's simple flashing, simple movements. Um, and then I really don't touch After Effects as much because I can get it done in Photoshop, which just happens to be a quicker thing. But After Effects is so much more of a smooth transition. So making sure like everything is kind of done in there and adding a little bit more complexity to the motion so that way we don't rely so much on our videographers to be doing the complex motions when we can be doing that so you're saying you've been animating in photoshop yeah <laughs> okay sorry yep, to hear all of us <laughs> yeah i mean it's just like one of those things where we get like a, a lot of graphics um sometimes you know it depends on our, our workload but mm -hmm. usually the social graphics it's high quantity um, so a lot of it, like, is just a process thing for, for me, as I think personally, like it's just quicker and easier to do everything yeah. in one stop shop. And then when I start getting into after effects, it ends up taking me personally longer because I'm not as familiar with it. So it, to, in my own time management mind, it's easier for me to just stick to Photoshop and try to find a quick way to do it rather than doing it the right way. But if I get acclimated to after effects in the same way I'm acclimated to Photoshop, then I will be able to power through those graphics and probably do them with a lot more of an elegant um, mm -hmm. end result in a graphic rather than the way I've been doing it. So I'm just really looking forward to getting re-familiarized and learning the tips and tricks that you've got. I've already like kind of gotten that from this. So this is great. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, the, the look, the fastest, there's nothing wrong with animating in Photoshop. The fastest way to do something is the fastest way that you can do it not the fastest way that someone else can do it. So you right. got to do what you, you need to do to, I'm, I'm putting an asterisk and I'm type next to Victoria, your name. I'm going to, I'm just writing speed. I'm going to focus on speed. For you. Okay, sounds Time like, management is, is key with this industry. Okay. For sure. Yeah. No, for everyone, but like also knowing that you've been animating in Photoshop is a huge plus because animating in any program already, you're ready you know, you already understand the, some basic concepts of setting keyframes and, um, and even just timing. Like as you use After Effects more, when you get, if you guys start to work with motion, you will know the difference between three frames, five frames and 10 frames. For example, like if you're gonna fade something in, how, how does it feel when something fades in over 30 frames? That's like, that's actually really, even though it's only one second, 
there's a certain feel and, and you'll start to make those connections. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, okay. Sam. Yeah. Um, so I started with design. Um, I used to like illustrate a lot of like logos for certain events happening, like whether it was on like my high school campus. Um, and then I realized that I kept passing it off to a designer to vectorize. Mm -hmm. And then I just got tired of passing it off. So I just decided to learn it myself. Um, so I got really into like vector illustration. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like my um, favorite thing I'd say. Um, so Illustrator is my favorite platform. Um, although I think I use Photoshop the most, um, especially with um, this industry. And I'd agree with Victoria that like I use Photoshop a lot for animation as well. Um, but I would prefer to get out of Photoshop for animation and strictly use After Effects. I think the fluidity between transitions is what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, and then everyone's kind of hinted on it, like logo animation um, and then like text kind of like just text manipulation or just text effects, I think that's really important. But also I've been really into, or trying to figure out like color correction um, and just how to do that kind of stuff within After Effects because I, I just get kind of scared <laughs> like going into that realm. Um, so I find myself going into like Photoshop and then bringing it over, or, like I'm not entirely sure like what the best workflow is for that. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't think color correction is, uh, I don't think After Effects is the best tool for color correction, but um, in terms of just adjusting like the mood, yeah, you know, tone and stuff like that, it's it's perfectly capable of that. Um, okay, awesome. Yeah, Illustrator is for sure, I think that's my favorite like design program. It's just, compared to, even though I use Photoshop more, Illustrator is, has more professional value just because of that. You can output vectors and illust it's, I'm happy to say that Illustrator and Photoshop both work really well with After Effects. But you probably will end up, uh, Photoshop is a little bit easier to work with in After Effects just because a Photoshop layer, you guys, if you guys know the difference between Photoshop and Illustrator, Illustrator's layer tab is, is incredibly frustrating because a layer is not a layer. A layer is a group in Illustrator. And um, that creates a little bit of confusion when coming into After Effects because a layer in, in After Effects is a layer. It's like a one-to-one -one ratio. It's a one-to-one -one analogy in After Effects and Photoshop. Like if you have a layer in Photoshop, it comes in and it's a layer in in After Effects, but if you have a layer in Illustrator, it's actually could be like like fifty shapes. You know what I mean? So so there's we'll we'll go over how to how to make sure that things make sense when jumping between those that's two good. programs. That's good to know too, because that's another thing that I think stresses me out when I use After Effects is like every time I save a file and import it, the way it comes in isn't consistent. So. Yeah that gets me frustrated sometimes when I'm trying to like work with it in the next program. I'm like, how do I set up my layers? So that way they're clean to work with in after effects. Yeah, um, exactly. And I didn't even know you could really use illustrator into there cleanly. So I'm interested to see how that works. Cause I like illustrator as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cleanly. I don't know if I'd say it's clean, but it, it's, it's doable. So yeah, it's just, so I like working in illustrator cause there's so much more forgiveness. Mm -hmm. In Illustrator, like I feel like sometimes you do things in Photoshop and, and you know, you, re you, you, screw you get a file in there and, and you do some sort of setting and it's really hard to get it back to what you need it to. I feel like Illustrator is a lot more forgiving in its usability. I agree. Illustrator, yeah. look, if you do something in Illustrator, it is professional and ready to go. If you yeah. do something in Photoshop, it, it, it might be just a meme. Yeah. It's, it's, gonna, it's <laughs> like, it, so... Yeah, I agree. And then Illustrator, you can concept stuff. You can just have stuff hanging out on the side. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Okay. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate that information. Um, so, Otto. Yeah, yeah. So, um, the sixth person that was supposed to be here, Chris Knopf, um, he was having After Effects trouble, but um, Chris? can't really speak for him. Yeah, Chris. Chris Knopf. Um, I told him that I'll be sending him the follow-up notes and the tutorial, okay. but um, 
he's a photographer here and he's like really real, well-rounded he knows like a lot of things i wouldn't be surprised if he knows a little animation somewhere here on the, here or there but he did express a lot of interest in learning after effects so i'm gonna like say he's on the same boat of like he's gonna want to animate his own work so for him okay. when he takes photos instead of passing it to a designer or a video person to string something together like i don't know stop motion or adding something wow. to it like an overlay he might want to do that himself got it okay so i think he's he's in line with with us i feel yeah i'd say that's that's accurate because i work with chris Noff on um, one client and I have to constantly like do the stop motions, but he he's always expressing like, oh, I want to learn. I don't want to learn it. And I'm like, oh, I could teach you in Photoshop, but it's probably not the best. So, um, yeah, I know he wants to like really learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll look forward to meeting him. Um, so we got time for one more lesson and I'm going to, I'm really glad to hear that you guys wanted a couple of you guys wanted to animate your own illustrations and and uh, this next lesson that I want to get going I, is gives me the opportunity to hit that but also introduce something called pre composing layers, which is similar to hitting command E in Photoshop anyone know what command E means in Photoshop merge. Yeah, merge. So um, being able to take multiple layers in Photoshop and, and merge them down is called pre-composing layers. And let me just get some files for you guys. I just need two files. Uh, one moment. Just got this idea. And tomorrow I'll have like all the files like very organized for you guys. Okay, I just uploaded a file and uh, let me send you guys the link. Um, just a quick heads up, I need to jump on a call at 1030. So, I mean, if you guys go past the 1030 mark for whatever reason, um, you guys can still stay on and um, I'll jump to my next call. Sounds good. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, this will be like literally two minutes. You might not even need to download this file. Okay, in the chat, I just dropped in a file that I'm gonna share with you guys. Um, you don't even have to worry about it right now. I think what's more important is just to watch my screen here. Okay, what, I'm, what I gave you guys was actually a Photoshop file and I will show you that Photoshop file in a second. Okay, sorry for that delay. Okay, by the way, I'm using Photoshop CS6 still, but it's it's pretty much the same as the new Photoshop as far as what we're doing. Okay, this is a sketch of a robot arm. And 
in Photoshop, I've broken up this sketch into three layers. I got the hand, like the forearm, and then the upper arm. Okay, and they're clearly named. And it's saved as a PSD file. So for those of you that already maybe have done animation in, in Photoshop, you probably understand why it's been broken up into those layers is because it's, it's kind of like a joint chain. Okay, what I'm gonna do in After Effects is I'm importing that PSD file. But guys, when you import in a PSD file and you want those layers to, to stay separate in After Effects, when you import, you have to change your choice, this drop down menu from footage to composition. Okay, composition literally means a collection of layers. Okay. And there's a lot of little details I'm skipping over right now because I want to focus on one thing, which is uh, introducing something called pre composing. If I if I go to all of these different uh, sections, these different layers, and I use a solo button, okay, the solo button is right next to the eyeball button. You guys might know that in Photoshop, you can, if you hold down option and click on an eyeball, it hides everything else except for that layer. Okay, I, I use it once in a while. It's almost like isolation mode in Illustrator, okay? Well, in After Effects, you can just hit this solo button and only look at one thing. There's another button for transparency, okay? I'm gonna move really fast here. When I select each one of my layers, I'm gonna solo it, and then I'm gonna hit the letter Y. What What's did you hit to make it transparent? Uh, at the very base of the viewer, there's a checkerboard button. Okay. Yeah, good question. I'm gonna hit the letter Y, and I'm just gonna change the anchor point to where like the joint would be, like the shoulder is right there. Let me solo the next layer, I'm highlighting it. The lower arm, the anchor point should be at the elbow. And then the hand, I'm gonna put the anchor point at the wrist. If I hit Command A and then hit the letter R, I can now see the rotation attribute. Let me zoom out a little bit. If I rotate all three at the same time, you can see they're all rotating, but it doesn't really act like an arm, right? They all are rotating, but what's the problem? Well, the position of some of these layers needs to change. There's two ways to go about this, okay? Now, I'm not gonna, I think that this will be a good lesson as a preview for what we're gonna start with tomorrow. How about that? That way we'll finish at 10.30 and um, I'm not overloading you guys with too much. So this is, let's look at this as a preview of tomorrow's lesson. One thing you could do is you could select the lower arm and the hand and use a, a command called pre-compose. That's command shift C. And then a window pops up and I'm gonna rename this lower arm comp. That's short for composition. Look, I just merged both of those layers down into a composition. Even the icon looks different. If I solo this, I'm going to I'm going to hit the letter Y and change the anchor point. Okay? Then I'm going to just hit the letter R and if I rotate, look the hand stays with it. Mm -hmm. However, if I rotate the upper arm, that lower arm's not staying with it. So another solution to this would be to select the upper arm, hold shift to select both of these layers, and then create another composition. This is, this would be called, I'll just call this arm comp because it's a whole entire arm. And let me write something real quick. It's really important for me to just write some of these words down. also known as pre-comping layers or simply just comping layers, okay? We can, those are all valid terms to use in the industry, talking to other animators. And what I'm doing here with, with pre-comping these different body parts is also known as nesting. Okay, I hope that kind of makes sense. I've, I've nested layers together in a certain hierarchy 
Okay, I'm hitting the letter Y again, and I'm changing this. Anytime you create a new composition, you're pretty much creating a new layer. So that's why I have to keep changing the anchor point. Now I could rotate the arm. If I want to rotate the elbow, I double click to go into the comp. Look, another tab opened, guys. Another tab opened in the in the arm comp. Now I can rotate the lower arm independent of the rest. And then if I want to rotate the wrist, I double click. And there's the hand. And I can I can move the, the wrist around and look at these three tabs. Just like in Photoshop, how I could have multiple documents open, you can have multiple compositions open in After Effects and jump within them. So now how do you like with those tabs and them being separate compositions, like if you were to hit play, all three play at once? Yes. I mean, I didn't set any animation yet. Okay. I didn't set any keyframes, but um, let's, let's set some keyframes right now. Great question. Okay, so now there's some, there's some movement for the wrist. By the way, this is kind of just an introduction to the idea of pre-composing layers or pre-comping layers, but um, I am gonna show you guys an alternative, method two. This is method one. Method two is, is better for animation, but method one, I'm using it because I'm trying to fast track you guys through a lot of concepts. So I'm kind of combining like character animation with introducing you to uh, techniques. Okay, so I know you guys, Sin, you gotta leave pretty soon, but if I hit play, uh, you know, they're <laughs> all three are moving at the same time now, but if I need to make adjustments, I can just switch over. Okay, so let me do a quick verbal recap. We start off the class by just simply animating the scale of a tree. And um, that lets that introduced the idea of using the stopwatch and setting keyframes. Then I had you guys change the anchor point before, before animating scale. Then I had you guys animate scale using a wobble formula with audio. And now I'm introducing the idea of pre-composing layers where I imported a Photoshop composition. So um, even though if you look back at the exercises we did, the animation we did was really simple, but I think it was a, a successful introduction to the whole interface. And you guys asked a lot of good questions. I'm really happy that I got some info on what you guys want to learn. And uh, that's going to, I feel, you know, first class, I'm always a little bit anxious. Like I'm not sure what, what you guys want, but uh, I'm, I feel super confident moving in for tomorrow morning. So um, you guys have my email address. Feel free to email me if you come up with anything else. Okay. Um, this looks great. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah so um, I'll hit you up uh, later after my next call meeting right now, Otto. Um, okay. But yeah, this was very informative um, and I'm glad we're getting that foundation that we need and you're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Nice to meet you, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow morning then. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.